welcome to Patros 53 on the road today. Beautiful Whitby Island in the morning. Concert tonight. 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 I'm with uh, Christian. And yeah, just I know you, but I, I want to learn more about where this all started and. So, um, the, I mean, like the Gypsy Jazz thing? Yeah, and no music. Music. Let's talk music. So, I started studying classical violin for a long time. That's, yeah. Like, that I, makes I did sense. the whole like regime, like six hours a day, Bach and Mendelssohn and all that stuff. So classically Classi trained. Classically trained. Where? Went to the conservatory in the Netherlands. Yeah. I went to, and uh, I had good teachers. I started with a Russian teacher also. So I went I went to the whole like Russian school of violin playing. But I, I liked it, but I never felt quite at home. So I was always looking for like new things to do. So at the conservatory where I was studying, uh, Rotterdam, they had this world music department with like salsa music, of course jazz also. But I was really attracted to tango music, tango, okay. Argentinian tango. Yeah. So I started playing that on violin, but then I fell in love with the bandoneon, like the instrument of Astor Piazzolla. So I just Argentina. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a German instrument, but it's now supposed to or it's like the, the national instrument of Argentina. Uh. So I took one home from the conservatory just because I wanted to see how you could maybe play chords and stuff. And then I just was obsessed by the instrument and I started playing that. And basically, did that for ten years. I only played bandoneon in in tango orchestras. So when how old were you when this all started? I started playing bandoneon when I was. 21. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, for 10 years, I, I toured with the Bandoneon. I toured around the, around the world, or mostly around Europe, playing the music of Astor Piazzolla, Oswaldo Pugliese, uh, mm. Anna Valtorello. There was no improvisation, though, in, in, uh, in Tanga, yeah. but you know, I was busy with the Bandoneon. But at one point, when I kind of got the hang of the instrument, I was intrigued by the concept of improvisation. Right. It seemed a really cool thing to do. So I was always like messing around on the violin, trying to play some jazz, and I took some lessons. At the conservatory there was also a, a jazz violin guy. And he was a great teacher, but it was so cerebral. The whole process of, of line turns in fights over the chords, it seemed, it seemed like something I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. But then when I was like 27, 20, I met Stochlo. Just randomly, uh, we uh, were concert, both. Uh, we, we were, I was at that time. I was arranging. I had a, my own symphony orchestra, and uh, we did like uh, yearly tours where I would arrange the music, conduct, and play some violin, classical violin solos. And we had guest soloists, soloists. And one year, Sokolo was the guest soloist, and I arranged some music for him. And uh, one piece was "Embraceable You," and I played like the theme of Corpelli and uh, Sokolo played solo, but I didn't play a solo. Mm -hmm. And we were backstage talking, so well, you should play a solo. But even though I kind of could play a little, fiddle, it, fiddle around a bit, it wasn't really up to the level of solo, so I didn't want to play a solo. But then he said to me, why don't you start studying Corpelli solos? Yeah. Because you already have this, that kind of sound, you know? So we started talking and I asked him, how did you learn this stuff? So well, I started Django solos until I was like 16, only Django solos, so I, I transcribed like 60, Propeller solos, like I'm just gonna do this thing, and I spent wow. the next like three, four years only doing that, like studying Propeller solos, like from beginning to the end, and then um, I got one, I got a call uh, by Stockholo of by his manager, like could you maybe do a gig, and I started touring with the Rosebud Trio. And I remember the first year was terrible because <laughs> I couldn't keep up with the with the Rosebud Trio. They were playing so fast, so good, fast and good. And I remember after one gig. Uh, Nushi came to me and said, are, are we playing too fast for you? <laughs> that was terrible, because I, I realized that they could hear it, that it was too fast for me. And then they just, they cut me out of all the fast songs. <laughs> Which was the best decision, because I was much more relaxed. But of course it was my goal to be able to play that fast and still beautiful. Right? So then I, I worked on that, and so after like maybe seven years of doing that, like six hours a day of practice, I finally felt comfortable doing it. And then I started the whole guitar thing, and that's another thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, tell us about uh, teaching. You love teaching. So uh, yeah, well, of course I started the, the Rosenberg, so I will tell the story really quickly. So I was touring with the Rosenberg Trio, and 
one concert talk came to me said you know this online thing is interesting yeah. and, and uh, uh, a good friend of his Martin Taylor has this academy and Martin Taylor told Stochlo you know you should do it for uh, yeah. Gypsy Jazz because you'll be the first one you know, you're a big name but Stochlo is at back then but still now he's not really like uh, the, the internet guy you know like mm. knowing how that works but he knew I was so he, he asked me could, could we do this online teaching thing and I I was researching it, it seemed like a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to some people, I contacted the website builder, and then we started doing this, uh, like we said, well, maybe a year. You know? Let's say eight months and people were not be interested, but now it's been six years or, yeah. Six years already. Right. Five and a half years, six years. And it's still running strong. And it, uh, there's so much stuff now in the Rosemary Academy. If you join now, because that's the thing, if you join for one month, you can join for one month, three months, six or months or a year, and it gets cheaper the longer you yeah. join. So that you join a year, you get two and a half months for free. But if you join one month, I always say to people, join one month. You and get to access try. to the complete backlog. It's like 65 songs. You can download everything, and and then you, in another year you come back, and then there will be 12 more songs. You know? Yeah. And um, so it's an ongoing uh, database, like it's, uh, yeah. it's not just archive. No, no, no. It, it keeps it's new stuff is happening, and people that are members are have influence on what the next song will be. Oh, uh, cool. So, but then what happened is, people didn't know who I was back then, and now it's it's people know me more. But back back then, nobody knew who I was. But I was, of course, the guy like replying on the forum. And people were asking me questions like, so uh, what happens when Stokolo would use his third finger there? And, all? and I was answering them. And then one, at one point, because I was answering them for my analysis, because I, I was filming stuff with two or three cameras, so I, I am very good at analyzing those movements and stuff. So I was answering them from that kind of viewpoint without being able to play guitar myself. But then one guy asked me on the forum, what kind of guitar do you have? And I didn't even have a gypsy jazz guitar. <laughs> and I, I felt like a complete fraud. It's like, okay, I need to be able to play guitar at least so that I, I'm sure I, I'm not selling some kind of weird things. <laughs> so I, I used the Rosemary Academy to teach myself to play guitar. Seriously? Yeah. So, and it, it, I can tell you it works because, well, I, I practiced guitar, I became completely obsessed. I'm still obsessed with the guitar. And I tried to practice six, seven hours a day on the guitar. And in five years, I actually managed to be able to play Gypsy Jazz on guitar. And <laughs> from that came this, what I call the Van Hamert system, which is my own personal method of learning gypsy jazz guitar based on what I learned from Stochelo. Because I'm basically a student of Stochelo's, right? I had access to him yeah. all the time with cameras and we we're playing together and he, I asked him questions and he corrected me. Or So based on what I learned there, I created my own method of learning this style quickly. Well, not quickly, because you still have to practice many hours, but right. with a clear plan. And I've been teaching that uh, it's like 20 PDF uh, thing, you know, like a uh, paper thing with a, with a lot of notes and stuff. And I've been teaching that now uh, in the United States mainly. So I've just been to Denver teaching it. I did a workshop this morning yeah. and people yeah. really seem to like it. Because it gives a clear direction in how to approach learning the style. It's a complicated style to learn and the, te the technique alone is, is complicated. So my, my system doesn't deal with technique. I have, I have separate things for that. But just for learning to improvise and be free, that's what we all want. We want to be free. This gives a clear direction on how to achieve it. Hmm. Interesting. And the bass? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. So the story is that um, I played bass yesterday in the concert of Queen Bichand. Um, Canadian. Yeah, yeah, and a great player. Yeah, oh yeah. Great guitar player and violin player. Yeah. And uh, and 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 other things too. Uh, he mailed me. Uh, or he messaged me like uh, two weeks ago when I was already in the US. He said, uh, hey man, can you play bass in my concert? I, I, at first I thought I was kidding. I was like, bass, are you sure? <laughs> said, you it's do a big violin. No? <laughs> you do play bass, right? And I do play bass because that's actually the instrument I graduated from from the from the university, from the oh, concert. Yeah, because I studied classical violin. I studied uh, uh, jazz violin for a short while. It didn't really work because it was like more modern jazz violin. So then I switched to bass because it seemed kind of easy instrument to me and it kind of was easy because I don't know it's just everything is slower on the bass and, uh, and you don't have to play so many solos <laughs> so I I, I, I started bass uh, I graduated the bass but then I didn't I didn't like playing it <laughs> I, I didn't really enjoy uh. playing it every day so I sold my bass like uh, six months after I graduated I sold my bass and I, I started I only focused on the bandoneon from that point on 
But so Quinn said, you do play bass. Yeah, I do play bass. I said, it's going to be easy, 45 minutes set. So okay, okay, so we're going to play tennis. Yeah, right? We're going to play all of me and we're going to play uh, uh, minus three, like, stuff like that. So I came there and he had to, he arranged the bass for me. He said, yeah, it's going to be really easy. Do you know the Canadian national anthem? <laughs> <laughs> How would I know the Canadian yeah. anthem? So that sort of like that. So I had to learn the Canadian anthem, and it was all arrangements and his own songs, and and I was so stressed. But then yesterday we did another rehearsal just before we were on stage, and I somehow remembered all the songs, and I had so much fun on stage playing the bass. And that was I, a good band. Was a yeah, and I it felt I felt at home, man, on the thing. Uh, I was I felt really I was free, and I I remembered all the stuff. Uh, it's just I still have the the right postures, and, and I know all the notes and. I had so much fun. That doesn't mean I'm gonna play bass from now on. No. But no. you know, I'd like just some yeah, like odd gig here and there. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Nice seeing you again. And uh, like I always say, keep drinking good wine and keep enjoying this beautiful music. Thank you. Doesn't matter the instrument. No. <laughs> no.